what we're going to talk about the rest of the day is, is memory management. And first we're going to look at how this works in C. C gives you explicit memory management. As a user level program, if you want access to memory, you can call these functions, and one of them is malloc, and it will give your user level program some access to memory. And it's up to the kernel to decide how to allocate memory to your process's memory space. These are just library functions that run within your program. They might need to go to the kernel to get more memory for your program, but usually they don't. Usually they just allocate within the memory space that the kernel has already given your program some chunk of memory that you can use. And then when you're done using it, you're supposed to call free to give it back. This also does not give the memory back to the kernel. It gives it back to your process, to the memory manager, to decide whether to give it to some other allocation request later. At some point, the memory manager can give pages back to the kernel. Right? But that doesn't happen when you call free. At least it's not guaranteed to happen just when you call free. So here's some C code. What do we expect this code to do? I know you're a little rusty on your C code reading, but you should still remember how to read C code. Good, yeah, so this seems like perfectly reasonable code. Right? We're going to allocate space to store an integer in memory. Right? That's going to create some location on the, on the heap, and x is going to be pointing to that location. And we're going to put in the value in the location that x points to, we're going to put the value 4414 and print it out as a number. We can compile and run that. We don't get any warnings. Works perfectly well. Is there any problem with this code? Are there any bugs in it? Yeah, OK. So we're not actually freeing it. In this case, that's not really a problem, because shortly after this, well, after main, our program executes, and the entire memory space that the kernel allocated to this program gets reclaimed. So the fact that we didn't reclaim the storage given to store this value x doesn't really matter. What about this? Is this one more correct or less correct than the previous one? So now we've got the free in there. What do we expect this to do when we run it? So what are all the things this could do when we run it? OK, good. So it could give us a seg fault. What else could it do? OK, it could give us the result that we got last time. What else could it do? Yes. It could print out garbage, good. What else could it do? There are no wrong answers to the question, by the way. So it's a good one to answer. Yeah. It could do anything at once. This is undefined behavior. We're doing something that uses storage that we don't have access to. It may still be part of our process. Right? It's unlikely that just because we freed that storage that the kernel reallocated that the page that it was on probably still part of our process, but it's undefined. Depending on what our particular C compiler and OS and runtime did, this could actually do anything at once. And when I run it, at least on my computer, it behaves just like the last one. Right? The fact that we freed the storage doesn't mean that it automatically becomes inaccessible. It's still there. The memory manager now knows it can reuse it for something else. But if I'm not running something else, if I don't have some other thread in this process allocating a bunch of memory, it's probably still there. Freeing it doesn't zero out the storage or do anything to what was there. It's still there, and this seems to work OK. So we probably wouldn't notice this bug the first million or so times this program runs. Then maybe on the million first time, something else happens, and that memory isn't there as we expected. It would be perfectly valid for that to happen. Let's try it like this. What do we think this one's going to do? Uh, so I'm using GCC with uh, WL, which, so WL is just give me all the warnings GCC is capable of giving me, just to make sure there's nothing a very strict compiler would complain about for this. And it's a good question, right? If I was using CLang or some other C compiler, maybe something else would happen. So certainly, for this example, any other C compiler could do whatever it feels like for this, and it would still be correct. It wouldn't be a sign that the compiler is wrong if it behaves differently than it did for GCC. But I am using GCC. What do we expect this one to do? Yeah. OK, excellent. Yeah. So to understand what this would do, we'd have to know more about what's going on inside freeze. Right? So we do two freeze, and we'd have to look at how free is implemented and understand how that works. Right? But as far as what the C language gives us, this is also undefined. It can do anything. What it does do on my Mac is actually gives me a runtime error. The way free is implemented is actually doing a little bit of checking. 
right? It's not totally letting programmers shoot themselves in the foot like the original C was designed to do. It's giving you an error, and then it's stopping and telling you you might want to do some debugging because your code's really bad and it's calling free twice. But it could do anything. There's, there's no guarantee, right? This is just what it does for me. It's undefined behavior. And it's actually you know, trapping this interrupt to give you this warning. So it's doing something probably in, in the implementation of free that's causing an interrupt, but it's got a handler that's turning it into this warning rather than just crashing. 